Welcome to 2017's The Defenders Review Show. So, I'm going to start by telling you that, yeah, I, I like this show a lot. Parts of it I absolutely love. I'm not sure there's particularly, there's, there's not going to be very many jokes in this video, and I don't think I'm going to get very serious. So, yeah, um, before you watch on, I record this as the first review of one of the Marvel Netflix shows because it was the first one to be... Ah, what's the word? To be done. You know, once... Yeah, they only made one season of this. And, yeah. And I don't do reviews for seasons. I review entire shows when they're done. So, you should definitely not watch this before... If, if you're not already familiar with the or other... Yeah, with the, the four defenders of the title. So, yeah. Now, let's see. So, yeah, I have watched every episode of this once, and I watched the finale yesterday. Yes, today. And, yeah, so the plot set a few months after the events of the second season of Daredevil and a month after the events of Iron Fist, the vigilant vigilantes Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist team up in New York City to fight a common enemy. And, yeah, they're, they're fighting the hand. Considering how many hand ninjas there are, the odds are against the four. There's a 50-50 chance that Solana will be the last night. Think fast. And that... Uh, yes, so, the writing. So, this was created by Douglas Petrie and Marco Ramirez. And written by... Them, Lauren Smith, and Drew Goddard. And I don't know that I have very much to say about the writing. They they handle the drip feed mystery quite well. That, you know, yeah, if you've watched Marvel Netflix, I haven't, you know, The Punisher was, premiered on Netflix after The Defenders, so I haven't watched that one yet, but... All the other ones, you know, this this came after five seasons. You know, Daredevil got two. You know, each of the four Defenders got at least one season by now. There's a drip feed mystery. It's, you know, there's, there's always something that you're only realizing over the course of the... Yeah. Now, I know some people were unhappy with the writing. I guess I can kind of see some of what they say. Nando V Movies does quite a good rewrite. I don't really have anything to say about it. Yeah, I, I think he does a good job. If you watch the show, I felt like it could be written better. Watch the Nando V Movies. Yeah. It does a good job of bringing the characters together. Uh, everyone has significant character moments. I saw one person say that every major character has an arc, and I hadn't really thought about it, but yeah, I, th I think that's true. And, yeah, so, yeah, the pilot is quite good. I, I know some people felt that it was, it wasn't, um, so I don't want to spoil it. It didn't further the plot as much as some people would have liked. I think the pilot was basically just a proof of concept. I think it was just telling viewers of the four shows, the five seasons, don't worry. Regardless of what hero you love, we understand that hero. We're gonna do them justice on this show. You know, rather than diving into something that... So, so yeah. Yeah, I, I think the, the pilot is excellent. And the finale is also quite good. There, there's aspects of the finale that I don't love. I, I've made a video where I talk about all the episodes individually. I talk about some of the things that bothered me about the finale. But overall, I was quite happy with it. In, in general, like this did everything I hoped that it would do. I, I, 
yeah, I struggle to understand why people were so unhappy with it. I, I guess one thing that I heard that I guess I can kind of understand is it wasn't bigger or better than the other Marvel Netflix. And, I mean, I think they're plenty big. I think they're excellent. You know, I don't love Iron Fist Season 1, but other than that, you know, I love the... I love the other four seasons, the other three heroes, so I didn't really need for this to go bigger. I will say, like, if we, you know, if we were to compare it, you know, the Defenders was essentially the Marvel Netflix version of the Avengers. I don't mean the team in the comics. I mean that first Avengers movie. There, you know, each of the individual major ones had a story of their own before, you know, and this is not as good as the first Avengers movie, and it definitely isn't, like, you know, you might have forgotten if you haven't watched it in a while, that movie really does, like, every single of the heroes are there with their full, like, power, like, this isn't an X-Men movie, keeping in mind I love the first two, and respect things about the later ones, this isn't, this, you know, the, the movie doesn't have anyone just stand around and not use their powers, not be of use, to quote Tony. The, the, every, every character is there, They're, they all have the powers that they had in their own movies and such. And yeah, you know, the Avengers, the action scenes are bigger, especially the climax is bigger than the... Yeah, so, it, you know, and, and yeah, like, oh, right, I will be spoiling everything MCU leading up to, but not including this show, so, yeah, you know, the, the first Avengers, you know, you've got, you've got all the, the heroes there that you've met in their own movies, you have the MacGuffin from Captain America, you know, you have the villain from Thor, and both of them are are, like, we, we know that they're powerful, but they're doing something that we haven't seen them do before. You know, the, the shield is there, which was introduced in Iron Man 1 and fleshed out in Iron Man 2. Uh, wait, I guess, is that, that's all of them, yeah. So, you know, and, and yeah, this show does not completely manage to do the same thing, although I didn't really feel like any of the titular heroes were just, you know, forgotten about, or that they didn't get enough to do. But the... yeah. Um, let's see, the direction... So, yeah, this this is definitely a show that rewards watching the five seasons leading up to it of other Marvel Netflix. Now, the showrunner for this was Marco Ramirez, who was also one of the two showrunners on Daredevil Season 2, which is a really amazing season. One that features incredible action and helped set up the hand. And, yeah, he brings those things to this, um, this show as well. You know, in including the stunt team, thus that brutal well choreographed action where, you know, yeah, sometimes bones break or people lose limbs and such. And like the shows that spun off from lots of great character moments here, Danny and his supporting players are consistently written, which was one of my main... that was probably my main issue with that show, how inconsistently written, the, yeah. It furthers their stories, character developments, several get arcs, again, yeah, some argue all the major ones do, rather than keeping them on the back burner. It answers some, not all, major questions left over by Marvel Netflix shows that came out before this one. And when you watch this, it becomes clear that that was the plan. That's why they didn't answer those before. They were leaving mysteries that this could then follow up on. And I, I gotta say, I, I'm i really impressed. Like, that is... I didn't see that coming. I really felt like, oh, they're just gonna keep us guessing, you know, and not... But, yeah, they actually answered it. And, yeah, the first episode go does a good job quickly introducing the individual members without rushing. And the show captures the tone of each of the Defenders. And, 
yeah, you know, another thing about the pilot, it's technically possible to start by watching that since it gives you an introduction to each of the main characters and, you know, in some ways, yeah, that's yeah, somewhat similar to Halloween 2018. In, in addition to the, the proof of concept thing. And, yeah, the, the, ah, crap, what was the, th there was some other thing, oh, right, yeah. You should maybe watch the, you know, Season 1 of Iron Fist, otherwise you will have trouble keeping up with his stuff. But, yeah, I'd say the other ones, you know, actually, I suppose, come to think of it, if this is the first you watch, then some of the things will be, will basically be plot twists for you. But, yeah, over the course of this season, the show tells you basically everything. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it tells you every single thing you need to know to be able to follow it. You're not going to be lost. And let's see. The hand returns here and you come to understand why they're doing what they do. There's payoff on things set up about them in previous Marvel Netflix. And yeah, I'm personally quite happy with the amount of action and at the same time, this is another Marvel Netflix show where even just scenes of them talking are deeply compelling. I'd say Iron Fist Season 1 is the only one that isn't true of so far. And I appreciate how realistically the show is approaching. Like, you know, we see the police react since Marvel Netflix or street level. We really don't see much of the police and, and such in the movies. Now... Right, so some critic quotes, more tight than any Marvel Netflix show before it because of having next episodes. Things happen on the show that will have repercussions for later shows featuring these characters. Some of the action is better than season one of the Iron Fist solo show. All the best shots are in the trailer, which gives away too much. Still, it's cool to see the scenes in the show. And Sigourney Weaver character is complex, not just an ice queen. We come to understand the ideology of the hand, why people would believe in the hand. I was hoping that Iron Fist would be one of the lighter characters in this. He is he's the most giddy at the idea of teaming up. Some of the supporting characters really don't want the four heroes to be doing what they're doing, and I get that it adds some pressure for the heroes, but it is kind of annoying as an audience member since they're trying to prevent what we want happening. The action is well choreographed and creative. I especially liked the action in episode 3 and the finale. The last 20 episodes of the final episode that messed with me, I was gripping my chair. Character characters point out how stupid Iron Fist is. I like that. Daredevil gets to do his thing, but the others don't get cool action. They keep trying to redo the hallway fight. The characters don't use their powers together, only separately. I'm glad Danny finally uses the Iron Fist. The show uses color well to define the characters. The show is okay, it's bland, it was supposed to be amazing. Since each of the characters, since each of the heroes have their own color scheme, and this has one for the villain as well, the show will use these colors to let us know whose world we're in. As the worlds converge, the colors will mix. And they do they also do this really interesting transition editing thing for when they move from one world to another's. And the problem is the Netflix model releasing every episode at the same time for an entire season means that they couldn't course correct Iron Fist since when people watched the first episode, the rest have already been filmed. If they had gotten feedback, maybe they could have tried to address some of those aspects after the first episode of why it was so negatively received. Maybe he wouldn't have been such an important part of this, which, if not named the Defenders, would probably have been called Iron Fist Season 1.5, Others have suggested it would be D Daredevil Season 2.5. The show basically has to decide between the two options for tone, the grounded approach of three of the Defenders, or the fantasy of Iron Fist. It goes back and forth between them a lot, but too often uses fantasy, and all the characters not from that fantasy world just don't fit into that. It doesn't matter how many times the show has Luke and Jessica say, that's ridiculous. Too much of the pilot is just catching up. There's very little plot that's necessary. It's a worst episode. Of the whole run of eight to action on the pilot. Each of the shows got to decide what the hand was in their show. They conflict, and because of that, it's a problem here. Now, yeah, so um, there's a lot of characters in this show. I'm just going to talk about the ones that I'm, I'm not going to get as into them as if, you know, Again, I realize I haven't done reviews on their solo shows yet, but that's where I will really get into. But let's see the. Um, hmm.
yeah, so the, the, yeah, I think I'm just gonna say, you know, the, the ones you expect to be here are largely here, and they are where they ended up being at the end, you know, last we saw them. And Kristen Ritter is so good as Jessica Jones, just, you know, always, but she has incredibly funny lines to Matt. The, the kind of snarky dry wit we saw on her own show. She hates, you know, when Daredevil, you know, we, yeah, we know from his solo shows, he prefers to cover his face. And she hates that. And, you know, I'm thinking it's something, because on her own show, you know, there's that flashback where, you know, Trish holds up the, the costume that Jessica would be wearing. I think her name would have been Jewel or something like that. And Jessica is like, I'm not wearing that thing, you know. And so now they, yeah, she just, she's not used to people wearing costumes. And it is the kind of, like, it's kind of weird, you know. So so she's just like, yeah, she's she's very critical of those. And it's very, very funny. And... Honestly, I really want Jessica Jones to reluctantly agree to be part of what's going on, but making snarky comments all along the way in every show. I don't just mean in the future. I mean edit her into shows from as far back as TV or streaming shows have been made. And... Let's see... Yeah, and, and you know, Matt tries to... You know, he, he he's used to being in charge. And he... You know, he and Jessica, yeah, they're both used to being on their own and, and go, doing things their way. So there's some some fun conflict there. And Luke and Danny also have some, <clears throat> you know, some, some conflict because of this, you know, yeah. Uh, let's see here. There's the, yeah, Coulter thought was a cool that the, the two was paired, had a wisdom versus youth quality. And yeah, I, I really appreciate that. And it, it works because that is basically like, I mean, on his show, Luke is basically a reluctant, like he, he doesn't really want to be doing this, but he makes a great mentor. You know, he knows, he really does understand, you know, that's what the, the people who try to help disadvantaged people always say, no, I understand, but no, he really legitimately understands. He was, you know, he did engage in violence before he's been to prison. He's, you know, he's had all these experiences, so he really does understand where these kids are coming from. And yeah, you know, Danny is in bad need of someone to try to, like, you know, he hasn't had a proper mentor since he left Kunlun. So, yeah, it's a it's a very fun. I th I thought they did a really great job with, with that. And let's see. Yeah, um, according to Wikipedia, Rand is picked on by the other defenders, which some viewers saw as an acknowledgement of the poor reception that the first season of Iron Fist received. However, Ramirez said the season had not been released when they were making the defenders that dynamic was how they naturally felt his character would be treated and i i have to agree it's just yeah it, it is this thing you know i i yeah i watched his season you know i yeah i guess i got done a week ago watching his first season and then i watched uh, you know um the stoned gremlin productions binge watching episode and for a bunch of them, you know, Brad Jones came up with different ways of saying, we can't take Danny seriously. He's just not... Yeah. I know the following is kind of a shallow thing, but I'm really glad that Danny's hair and facial hair is toned down from the first season of his solo series. I thought it was kind of ridiculous there, even after he got a haircut. And Luke points out Danny's privilege... And <clears throat> it, 
uh, Detective Knight shows up, and I'm really glad the characters like her were not made to tone down their hair and other signifiers. And I guess I... Yeah, I'm not going to... I'm not going to talk about all of these, but I will say that, you know, yeah, the, the hand is back, and we now meet the five fingers, the leaders of the hand, which, I mean, I felt like that was a huge, you know, um, raising of the stakes from the, the solo shows, and that's also why, you know, because that is the thing, you have to under, you have to explain, you know, the Avengers movie explained Thor himself may have been able to stop Loki back when they were fighting on the Rainbow Bridge. He can't stop the entire army on his own, and he doesn't have the science genius to find Loki, you know, so all of these things, and yeah, you know, in this one, the, the yeah, they, they do different things, you know, Jessica works on research and tracking down Daredevil thinks of like uh, I suppose I don't want to give that away but yeah he has a reason for being involved intimately and yeah you know Danny has a connection to the hand so that yeah I don't think I'm going to give away why Luke gets involved but yeah and Scott Glenn returns as Stick, and he respects the Iron Fist, but he still thinks Danny is a dumbass, which I quite appreciate. And Rosario Dawson as Claire Temple wouldn't be a Marvel Netflix show without her. And Sigourney Weaver plays Alexandra. And yeah, so Weaver called the character really smart, very in charge, more of an adversary than a villain. Ramirez described her as a survivor, a very powerful force in New York City, adding she's everything Sigourney is, sophisticated, intellectual, dangerous. And... Let's see. Weaver worked with the writers to, av to avoid a cliché portrayal, specifically terms like Ice Queen that are often thrown at women who aren't completely sympathetic. It was important to Ramirez and Weaver to introduce Alexandra sympathetically, and I have to say they absolutely accomplished that. And let's see. I have never been unhappy about seeing Sigourney Weaver in anything. And yeah, this show reveals that Gao, Madame Gao, is scared of her. And you know, that is one of the classic ways in comic books to establish that someone is a big deal. To have someone that we already knew was a big deal be scared of them or defeated or something. And, yeah, so it's, you know, it's not a surprise. But, yeah, they did not recast Madame Gao either. And I, I, uh, I never tire of seeing her in, in these shows. Which is good, because she... I guess Jessica Jones season one was the only season where she didn't appear at all, wasn't it? She was in both seasons of Daredevil. Oh, right, and, and Luke Cage. She was in both seasons of Daredevil and season one of Iron Fist. She wasn't in Jessica Jones or Luke Cage, but yeah, that is still a lot. Of, of, the, of the five seasons, she was in three of them. And let's see. The, I think... I think I'm gonna leave that about the yeah and Carrie Ann Moss as Jerry Hogarth you know reprises her role and I she's also a character I will never tire of and I think I'm going to let that pretty much. But yeah, you know, a lot of the supporting cast, even Josie, the owner of Josie's Bar, you know, shows up. So, and let's see. The, yeah, you know, the, the, 
I was worried that there would simply be too many supporting characters for one show, since all four Defenders bring with them at least one from their own show, and each of the shows have enough supporting cast for one show each, but they give them just enough time to matter, not so much that they take over, we're here for the titular Defenders after all, not so little that the shared continuity is ignored. Like, it would have been quite a disappointment if they didn't show up at all, and it's kind of the th that's kind of the thing where, you know, in Avengers movies we kind of just accept, because these are big names, you know, they're not going to get... So, so yeah, you know, Natalie Portman, we see a still shot of her in the first Avengers, and, you know, Coulson says, oh yeah, she's, she's off the, she's, she's far away from this, don't worry. Uh, you know, Pepper appears very briefly, and, you know, I mean, to be fair, there's no one that could have been there for Steve, since all his are really, really old or dead. But the, let's see, yeah, and it's, like, it's fine that we don't see Odin, but, yeah, the, the, you know, yeah, I, I think this did a better job of that kind of thing than the, the first Avengers movie, and I understand why. It's, you know, the, when they were making these shows, they also, like, I'm pretty sure they, they probably said when they hired them, you're going to be expected to appear in multiple shows. Yeah, and that was back when they had, like, these, um, you know, huge contracts where you had to appear a certain amount of times and such, which, as far as I understand, they try not to do that so much more. Now, the show explains why the different heroes, who have very different approaches, end up working on the same thing and even together. Some people do feel that there was not enough time where the four were actually together. I I was happy with it. And returning characters are consistent with their previous Marvel Netflix appearances. Some of them are still frustrating. When it comes to Iron Fist and his supporting characters who are very inconsistent on their show, here they tend to go for the less frustrating versions, although I do understand why some people hate Danny here as on his own show. And it has characters put in danger in unexpected ways, which I really appreciated. Some great bonding and also clashing. And each of the heroes get heroic moments. Now, some critic quotes. The show has the MCU villain problem. The cast are talented, though some are wasted, and there are some good pairings. There are not... These are not... Ah... There are not enough visually distinct features to Luke and Jessica, so in some of the more darkly lit fight scenes, which there are a number of, it can be difficult to keep up. The heroes, especially Luke and Jess, are too tough for the hand to hurt. The villains are not threatening enough. And see, I honestly... I think I kind of just accepted that, you know, they're not necessarily... I mean... Yeah, I, I don't know that I thought it was a problem here more so than on the solo shows. Now, but but I respect that, uh, you know, some people felt that it was. And, yeah, so the, the I've, I personally quite like the dialogue. You know, it's very sharply written. One critic said there is at least one character who basically only speaks in exposition, and I suppose, yeah, maybe that's, uh, yeah. And, but, but yeah, you know, each have their own voice, and that also goes for the new characters. And, there's, yeah, that brings us to the cinematography, which was handled by Matthew J. Lloyd and James McMillan. Some very careful framing where the important character object is close to the camera and some someone or something less important, but still important, is far away from the camera. And some of the fights do have long takes and it's, it's still really, really cool. The editing was handled by Jonathan Chibnall, Miklas Wright, and Michael N. Knu. And 
the editing is is quite good things flow naturally most of the time so I, I know some people felt that there are parts that are, should have been trimmed out or cut entirely I didn't really feel I, I felt like they did a, a good job of that there, there was no scene that I found boring or yeah and there's some there's a some cool settings there's a I suppose yeah I'm I'm not gonna get into too many details because some of these I really want you to experience by seeing but yeah you know the there's the um, there's there's yeah restaurants and various like the the places the kinds of places that make sense for where the heroes or villains you know hold up and such and I personally I gotta say I th I thought the show had a good sense of danger for the for the titular heroes um, I always felt like yeah I mean the the villains are right like right around the corner like no matter how smart the heroes are about it you know there's they're facing a very serious challenge and threat here so the action with some exceptions the fight the fights in the defenders always involve people on both sides that the audience knows and understands. Now, sometimes we only realize that at the end of the fight, but, you know, yeah, Daredevil in both of his seasons fought a lot of thugs and ninjas. Jessica didn't fight a huge amount of people, so that's there's, it's difficult to make a comparison there. Danny fought a lot of ninjas. And, let's see. Yeah, you know, just the, the people in, engaged in action scenes on the defenders are ones we get to know. I really appreciate that. It's much more compelling than just fights against faceless goons. And I say that as someone who does still appreciate that in the Avengers movies and such. And the 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 opening of the pilot has a very cool fight. And Danny gets some really great action in this much, much better than anything on Iron Fist season one. You know, it's not Finn Jones. It's the fact that for Iron Fist season one, the choreography was taught to him ten minutes before filming, and yeah, another really really cool hallway fight in a Marvel Netflix show. I don't think I'll ever get tired of those. Now, some critics said lots of fight between good guys and ninjas, too much punching, too many people who use martial arts. Jess and Luke's Luke throw people, hit them against hard surfaces, hits hit them hit hard objects against them basically nothing but these things so the choreography is bland compared to daredevil season one for sure it doesn't quite reach the the level of choreography of daredevil season one but i yeah i i really really love the yeah so the score was handled by composer john Pais, Pais, paisano who scored who has scored 23 movies and he has 20 TV credits and let's see the right he also scored the Maze Runner movies so yeah so you know this kind of edgy action for teenagers it's, you know, he has experience with. Yeah, uh, I quite like the Defenders score. I'm not sure I have very much else to say about it. Just, yeah, I, I thought it really worked. And that brings us... Yeah, all of the antagonists are memorable, interesting most of them are charismatic and the relationships they have with the protagonists is also quite compelling really great sound design you know this has a lot of things that 
don't yeah. they might also be able to happen in the real world but they're not happening the way they look you know certainly there's a, a bunch of sword stuff you know that you know obviously they didn't actually fight with dangerous swords so yeah they they do a really great job in the editing room making the audio sell that that brings us to the pacing so this has eight episodes not 13 like the other Marvel Netflix shows although I think it's Iron Fist season 2 has 10 but yeah it may means it's tighter more focused no filler some people do of course take issue with the amount of exposition and such compared to the amount of action I personally thought they did a really really great job like I never felt like they just lost and that happened like even my favorite of the of the other shows you know there would be something where I felt like okay this was not necessary this is here because they need 13 episodes and yeah since some people really hate the 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 pilot I would say if by the end of the second episode if you're not interested I'm not sure there's anything in the rest of the show that's you know, you may not have gotten everything you had want. Third episode. Watch until the end of the third episode. If you still aren't interested in fall in continuing, you know, you don't have to keep watching. So yeah, the best element of this is seeing the four leads bounce off each other and you know, some of the interactions between their supporting casts also quite good. And yeah, um, Let's see, the worst aspect. I mean, I guess it could be... The action could be somewhat more varied. And, and this is somewhere that I would say the Nando V movies rewrite does exceptionally well, both at pointing out the lack of variety and providing an alternative that... You know, so it's not just a claim. Now, the worst thing, according to... Uh, you know, personally, I don't think it's a big deal, but I, you know, some people do, and I respect that. The worst thing, according to others, is the choice of villain being the hand. I, I don't think that's a problem, but I guess I can... I can understand why some people do. I was most worried that there would not be enough room for all the major and supporting characters, and they somehow managed. I'm very impressed. I was most looking forward to continuation of the stories of the leads, and yeah, the the show exceeded my expectations. So yeah, the the pilot is great, the finale is great, and the overall season is also great. And Let's see. So yeah, the, the trailer does give at least a little bit too much away, but it also gives you a good idea of what the movie's like. And I got really hyped up for it when I watched the trailer. And I was very happy with what I got. And let's see. The, the cover and the posters don't really give too much away. You know, they, they tell you some of the significant characters that are going to be in this. I suppose I would argue, yeah, maybe maybe hold off on looking at the, the posters until you've watched the first several episodes, since I would argue there's one thing that's, yeah. Now, I found 63 different videos on YouTube, here on YouTube, when I looked, and yeah, so... <clears throat> on Rotten Tomatoes, Marvel's The Defenders further develops well-known characters in an action-packed arc whose payoff packs more than enough of a punch to offset its flaws. It has a 78% and let's see, a 70% audience score, 100 critic ratings, 3,527 user ratings, and let's see the yeah. So the average. Critic rating was 6.60, and yeah, duh. There's a hundred overall critic reviews, so and it's 78%, so it's 70 
eight reviews that were rated fresh. And let's see. So yeah, the, the audience score, you know, the average rating was three, let's see, three point seven out of five. And yeah, it's certified fresh. On Metascore, it is 63 out of 100 based on 30 critic reviews. I'm just really quickly going to check if it let's see. Yeah, and of the of the 30 critic, 16 are positive, 13 are mixed, only one is negative. And Let's see. Right, and the user score is 6.5 out of 10 based on 74 ratings. Now on IMDb, it has. Oh, hold on. Um, oh, I forgot to know. I'll. I swear I won't take forever on this. I'm just really quickly gonna see. So the. In total, there are 369 user reviews, or 260 if you hide the spoilers. Uh, let's see, 65 links in the IMDb external reviews section, 29 of them were in English and not broken links. And yeah, so this has a 7.2 out of 10 on IMDb based based on 106,126 MB users and 27.1 gave it a 7, 24.7 gave it an 8, 14.0 gave it 6, 12.3 gave it 10, 10.8 gave it 9, and let's see, 5.4 gave it 5, and the rest are so low, you know, 2.3 and below. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Now, while it did not win any, it was nominated for nine different things. Primetime Emmy for Outstanding Original Main Title Theme Music. It is great. And let's see, Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy and Horror and Films. It was nominated Best Supporting Actress on Television, Kristen Ritter. And let's see, Black Reel Awards for Television 2018, Black Reel Outstanding Supporting Actress, TV Movie Limited Series, Simone Missick, and I believe that is, that is Detective Knight. She is really great here. Outstanding Supporting Actress, TV Movie Limited Series, Rosary Dawson, Outstanding Actor, Mike Coulter, and let's see, Outstanding TV Movie Limited Series, Image Awards, NAACP, Outstanding Actor in a Drama Series, Mike Coulter, Let's see. and Online Film and Television Association, 2018, Best New Theme Song in a Series. Now, the yeah, the, the effects, some, most of them are really, really good, but there are a couple there's this really major thing that happens. I'm not going to get into details, but, you know, big thing happens. And some of the effects are a little, like, you can tell they were on a limited budget. And I'm not expecting them to be, you know, obviously this did not have the budget of, for example, the first Avengers, which has, like, I think $200 million behind it, you know. But it is the kind of thing where... The effect is CG, and I just wish they had gone with a practical effect, because I do believe they could have done it, and that it would have been more convincing. I, I, I'm not one of those people who say that practical effects are always more convincing, you know, but I, yeah, but, but by and large, you know, yeah, when, when there was an effect on the show, most of the time it felt convincing, you know, Makeup, blood and gore, prosthetics, and the the kind of 
yeah, you know, they have superpowers, so every some so often someone picks up something that's extremely heavy or yeah, various things and yeah, with with very few exceptions, it felt convincing. And the stunt work I mean, I could spend a long time just gushing about the stunt work, so I'm just gonna they they did a really great job. You know, the the fights feel visceral and real and like it feels like people are actually getting hurt, which obviously, you know, if you know anything about film production, you do not want people actually getting hurt while making the movie because that means that person can't keep doing the fight and we have several more hours of fighting to do. So now we're going to have to find a replacement and yeah. It, yeah, it felt really convincing. And let's see the... Yeah, and, you know, the, the level of violence is also about what we've come to expect from the Marvel Netflix shows. And, yeah, you know, I, I thought they used it well. There were times where the violence was very shocking and off-putting, which is, you know, kind of the idea, the, this whole street-level thing we're supposed to feel when some, it's, it has that, like, it, it hits you. And, yeah, I, I recommend this to fans of the four heroes, fans of team-ups in general. And, yeah, the, the streaming service itself, Disney Plus, I'm gonna double-check one last time, but last I checked there were no special features and there still aren't, no. If, you know, if you have Disney Plus, the only thing it has for this show is the the show, you know, the, the, yeah, the episodes, the, the eight episodes and it is nice enough to, in the suggested section, lead you to the four series leading up to it and the Punisher. But yeah, um, you know, if you if you don't already have Disney Plus, you know, if you feel like you can live without Marvel and MCU stuff, this probably isn't the thing that's gonna like blow your mind and completely change your opinion on it. Now, if I have to be completely objective, I am gonna have to rate this a seven out of ten, but. This is my video, I don't have to only be objective. I rank this 8 street level team ups out of 10. I, I'm not ruling out possibly rewatching some of it later today. Um, as an example of how much I really like this show, just. I watched the finale yesterday and recorded my video where I talked about the, yeah, you know, the, the, all the episodes, all eight episodes. I talked for an hour and 15 minutes, and originally I was going to record this video tomorrow, and I just got done recording a three-hour, five-and-a-half-minute video talking about Hellraiser, another, you know, a movie that I absolutely love. So you'd think I'd be like, you know, I'm, I'm... This is, this is good. I'm good. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna keep doing videos today, but I ju I wanted to talk about it so badly that I recorded the video today and just you know. So yeah. Between the 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 Hellraiser video and this, all I did was like have lunch and I just was like I got I gotta talk more about it. I I figured this now. I've probably, I feel like I've said everything that I really wanted to about the, the show, so I can probably stop talking about it now. But, you know, yeah, if you're already a subscriber of mine, I guess you'll find out if I upload more videos talking about the show in the near future. But, yeah, the... The... The, the ranking worst to best of these first six seasons of Marvel Netflix television. Worst to best, I love all except for Iron Fist Season 1. Iron Fist Season 1, Daredevil Season 2, The Defenders, Luke Cage Season 1, 
Daredevil Season 1, and Jessica Jones Season 1. So, hit me up in the comments, let me know what is your favorite of these first six Marvel Netflix shows, and if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell like it's working for the hand. There should be a link to my main channel page, one two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and one talking about my spoiler thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars show, which these days is Andor. And recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one, but with the thoughts in the same video instead of in a separate video, since its running time is significantly shorter than a show. In other words, if you want more videos like this, good luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my review next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoy watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.